Hey there, welcome to The Hot Slice, the weekly podcast brought to you by Pizza Today Magazine. I'm your host, Jeremy White, editor-in-chief of the aforementioned best B2B magazine on the planet. Joined today by none other than Denise Greer, who happens to be the best executive editor on the planet. What's up, Denise? Thank you, Jeremy. I am well. How are you today? I'm just showering you with love. So that you don't complain that. later when we get really busy with Pizza <laughs> Expo deadlines and you're uh, like, this is too much. You know, we are going into like the crazy uh, time. We are just a little over a month away, a month, one month, month. away from Pizza Expo. Month. It's amazing. Um, so that means we're in crunch mode. And by the way, we're following up Pizza Expo within another month and a half with Pizza and Pasta Northeast. So uh, so it's, uh, it's a good time. It's a good time to be in the pizza biz. It is a good time. We're finally going to all get back together at the Las Vegas Convention Center. And, you know, speaking of that, uh, we have a host, uh, or we are hosting a guest here in a little bit that, that we will talk to, I should say. But before that, while we've mentioned Pizza Expo, let's talk about that. Because mm-hmm. right now in the pizza industry, it's a very trying time in terms of finding help. We hear the refrain over and over again. I can't get good help. I can't find employees. No one wants to work. We we hear that over and over and over. Mm -hmm. Um, So we're going to address that very issue with some of our workshops at International Pizza Expo. Yeah. And these workshops are not, they're not just hour long sessions. These things, uh, first of all, they are fee based. Um, So you do want to register ahead. Um, but these are not in, like, you're not going to have to um, not go on the show floor to go to these workshops because these are happening Sunday and Monday. Um, so they're the, before the show floor opens. So you can, you know, you can grab everything and, and be able to take in all that knowledge before you even get on the show floor. But these sessions are like power packed. They have uh, you have take home materials where you're going to get to actually use that stuff. You know, I mean, uh, you know, they're going to give you charts and things and, and, and real applicable things to take home with you. Uh, and they're taught by some of the best folks in the business, people we love that, uh, that are doing great things. They're led by, you know, for the pizzeria owners out there listening and watching, they're led by, by your peers who happen to be expert at what they do, who are really thriving in this industry. Mm-hmm. They've been in the trenches They're They've been where you are and um, their advice and their knowledge are second to none. And this workshop program really is very topical and very critical to the success of the everyday pizzeria owner moving forward as we come out of this pandemic. So yeah. definitely did want to want to throw that out there and give a little love mm-hmm. to those workshops and encourage yeah. everyone who is planning to attend International Pizza Expo. Yeah to look into those workshops, uh, look at the lineup. It's pretty impressive. Find one that fits your needs and check it out because you'll be very glad you did. Yeah. And I'll say one, one final note, especially if you've been to pizza expo and you've been up in um, the education area, you know, how, how packed those those rooms can be sometimes for those uh, smaller sessions with these, these are four hour sessions and they're smaller groups. So that means you're getting a little more one-on-one. That means you can actually raise your hand, ask questions, uh, get the, get to the insights that you need right there. Um, So it's definitely more of a, um, an inner interactive, um, session. Yeah. The, the, the bang for your buck is there. No, no doubt about it. Absolutely. And, well, I, enough salesmanship, right? Yeah. That's not what we're here for, but I just did want to throw that out there. It's, it's important. Yeah. Yeah. Having said that, let's talk about today's guest. We're going to be interviewing Bart Weidlich of Kidder, K-I-D-D-E-R, Kidder mm-hmm. Street Pizza or Kidder Street Deli, excuse me. Uh, yeah. He serves pizza in his deli, Kidder Street Deli in um, Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and Bart's an interesting guy. There are a lot yeah. of colorful characters in our industry. And I would say Bart falls into that category. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, he's struggling with the same thing we're all struggling with um, as far as uh, finding employees. And, you know, the unique thing about him is he opened up four weeks before the pandemic started. So he's barely, you know, getting getting his feet off the ground. And then this happens. So you're going to definitely feel the frustration um, that he has. Um, mm-hmm. But you're going to see kind of how he shifted into like 
a single man operation, uh, which is which is really trying. And and so hopefully uh, you'll be able to kind of see what the, what he's gone through. Yeah, through uh, you know he was punched in the gut right out of the gate, and through sheer perseverance and uh, blue collar hard work, he he has managed to come through it. And now he is working on a on a mobile unit. He's not finished. There are a lot of unknowns with his business plan that he freely admits. Mm -hmm. He's not really quite sure if the mobile unit's going to um, coexist with the deli mm -hmm. or cannibalize the deli. Um, and he, he's formulating his game plan as he builds out the unit. And he's really um, open with that. He's like, hey, I don't know exactly yet what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. I just know that I'm mm -hmm. going to run through a brick wall and do it. And there's something to be said for that determination mm -hmm. for sure. Absolutely. Well, let's just jump right into the conversation. Sounds good. Every pizza you serve makes an impression. Make each one count with Baccio Exceptional Italian Pizza Cheese. With a kiss of buffalo milk, velvety melt, extraordinary stretch, no overbrowning, and superb reheat, Baccio is the unparalleled performer designed to consistently impress. And only Baccio offers the Gold Club Rewards Program, which provides monthly cash back and exclusive marketing support. Schedule a demonstration at BaccioCheese.com slash hot slice and discover how Baccio Exceptional Italian Pizza Cheese creates pizzas that impress. Performance Food Service is proud to deliver high quality products, innovative technology, and custom operational solutions to restaurants of all sizes across the country. The flagship division of Performance Food Group, with deep roots in the restaurant industry, Performance Food Service has been the exclusive distributor of the Roma family of brands for more than 65 years. This signature relationship has allowed Performance Food Service to become a leader in the pizza and Italian segment of food service nationwide. Bart, I definitely want to talk about the bus behind you that we're that you're working on. But before that, I just want to know a little bit about Kidder Street Deli. So Kidder Street Deli is a place that I opened up. Uh, I was working on it for about a year, and then I opened up for four weeks, and the coronavirus hit. It was right. a uh, it was a deli, and i I had an ice cream I had an ice cream business that I did for twelve years, and for the last three years of it, I bought a wood fired oven. So I have a mobile, I have a mobile wood fire, or, or I'm sorry, I have a standard wood fired oven that I utilize. Yeah. And we started from there. So coronavirus hit, all the workers took off. <laughs> so I had a calling. I had a, I had a, a great customer base for the wood fire pizza. So I lit the oven up and it's what got me through the pandemic really did. And you know, it was, it was, it was a hard struggle. It still is. Yeah. And you were a one man operation. You reached out to us and sent us a note about, how you're a one-man operation. Yeah, talk about yeah. that a little bit. What, what happened with working, you know, doing it all yourself and trying to function as a, as a pizzeria all on your own? Yeah, it was hard. We tried, I, I tried to do a ton of stuff. I had some workers. I shouldn't say I did it all on my own, but the majority of it I did on my own. And yeah. to be honest with you, I did the construction on my own. I did everything. I took an old garage. I took an old garage and I converted it into a, into a, a restaurant. So then to the deli. So I did have some workers. They all came and went for one reason or another. I mean, I don't know how descriptive we could be on here. Who's not showing up? Who's going in the bathroom getting messed up? Who's calling off saying they need mental days? Who's, you know, just stealing? You know, it, it, it's, it's prevalent in all restaurants. It is. Mm -hmm. It's sad. But I really, I did everything. You know, prepped everything, did every dish, washed every dish, cleaned the window, swept the parking lot. You name it, I did it. And it's, it's. In this situation right now, you really have to turn it into a one-man operation. I tried to focus on how I can make it easier as one man because I knew I was the only guy that was going to show up every day and give it 110% every day, every second I was there. Mm -hmm. How unsettling was that to, to know that, okay, if I get, <laughs> if I get sick, if I'm I need trouble. three or four days off work, there, there's no one else. It, it, was, it was very hard. It was very hard waking up and going to bed, knowing that hopefully I, I, I don't get sick, that I don't. And thank God I have a great immune system. Thank God I'm healthy. Um, I, have, I, have, I have really have a great support system, some, some people around me. Like I said, I have my children's mother who came out. She helped a little bit. She was great watching the children. And there was times where I actually had my kids come to work with me. They're 10 and 7, Nicholas and Renata. And they came in to help me. And, and all, there, was, it was all, there, there was nothing you could do. You have to do what you have to do to survive right now. It's, yeah. it's, it's a sink or swim. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many pizzas per day were you selling once you started um, expanding in, into the pizza realm? 
we were doing, I was, I was stretching out, making, cooking, watching the fire, everything, anywhere from an average to, you know, 50 to 70 to 80 pizzas a day. Yeah. And then we we're also doing, excuse me, it's hot here. Um, <laughs> and also I was doing, uh, we, I, you know, I had some fires when I had workers. I was doing some homemade wood fire breads that I was making my own sandwiches on and wood firing the sandwiches and some, and some desserts and some appetizers that we're doing out of there also. And, and I had to stop because the pizza is the pillar of the place. And if I screw the pizza up, mm -hmm. I might as well shut the doors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask. What other adjustments did you make? Um, because working on a skeleton crew, you know, you really have to tighten things up, um, you know, from when you open four weeks before the pandemic to, uh, to after that. And even now, how did you have to tighten things up to, uh, to stay functional? It was hard. It really was. It was a lot of, it was, it was a lot of thinking. It was a lot of, um, and I'm not an OCD person whatsoever in my life, not one mm -hmm. bit, but I mostly do with my cooking processes. That's one thing that I am. Mm -hmm. not, even, not even with my child care, I'm not. <laughs> but what I, you know, it was very hard to streamline things, you know, and thank God I have some decent experience in the industry and that I, and I really just had a, a, a lot of thought process, a lot of, you know, people would come in and say, hey, look, they come in one week and they come in the next week and say, what'd you do? You moved everything around again. You know, mm -hmm. and you have to, you know, you have to, you know, when you're one man operation, first it has to be streamlined anyway, but then when you're one man operation, you really have to limit your steps. I always say, if I could take away five steps in the day, I did something positive with it. Yeah. No. Um, so how's the business right now? Now that we've, you know, we've kind of gotten over the hump in many ways with the COVID and, and a lot of people are open full steam, full steam ahead. And now I know the hiring is tough, but, um, Where's your operation at right now? It's still in the same predicament. I uh, still have, I have one worker. He's a fantastic worker. His name is Mark. He came from a, he came from a, a franchise experience from a Domino's. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was hard for me to change him from that. Every pizza is structured. Every pizza has to look perfect to, you know, artisan pizzas to something that, because it has to be original. Mm -hmm. All your stuff has to be original, and that's what I thrived on, you know, originality. And so it's still a difficult situation for me. Mm -hmm. It really is, you know, and trying to pinch every penny and save everything and not blow money and, you know, and, and buy some used equipment when you can, you yeah. know, instead of something brand new. And, you know, you really have to. My worker one day was telling me, he says, you know, I would get my list of everything that I would need. Yeah. And he said, what are these numbers afterwards? That's how much it costs me. I said, that's how much I know how much I'm going to be spending. It's my food cost. I would try and tell him, you know, because they don't know that. You get a worker yeah. and he doesn't know anything about food costs. He just comes in, punches the clock and leaves. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I got you. How's my, how's my fire over there? Give me one second. I want to go throw All wood right. in the fire. Okay. So, Denise, I'm looking at this and it appears that that maybe was previously a school bus. We'll have to ask him about that. Yeah, it looks like one of those short schoolies, looks which like people a, are turning into the, houses. So I kind of like that it's being turned yeah, into a mobile Yeah, so uh, mobile Bart pizza is kitchen. Working, has been working on a mobile unit for a couple of months now that he is soon to fire up, no pun intended. I think he told us um, before we got on that it should be operational in the first couple of weeks. So Bart, tell us a little bit about What's behind you right now? Was that previously a school bus and you were converting it into a mobile pizzeria? Is that correct? Yes. Yes, it is. And what I'm trying to do is go mobile. All right. So I was getting tires on my mother's car in the wintertime. My friend had a bus sitting in there and I called him up. I said, what are you doing with the bus? He said, why well, want it? And you know, when I was looking at it, I said, that would make an amazing concept of a mobile wood fire pizza bus. And so I, you know, we made a deal about the bus and we got started and you know, we've been here this, I've, we're working on it for a couple months now. Okay. So was it, it, it was truly a, a bus with seats and everything when you acquired it, you had to pull the seating out of it and configure the kitchen space and the vent put in the oven. Yep. You had to do everything. Yep. Yep. Now, now this is a little Neanderthal. This is still in the process. It's still a work in progress. We are, we plan on venting it out at the top of the bus. Um, this is just a temporary setup. I put in the, the oven, the, the shoot out the, the um, exhaust out the side. Mm -hmm. So we also bought a, I bought a sort of a walk and cool. I bought a, you know, like a bizarre tap system, the beer systems that they would keep the kegs in when they have the tap stick sticking out right. the side. Beer cooler mm -hmm. sorted. I bought one of those for, so it's going to be, a, I bought it and I'm going to do a tow behind walk and cooler unit I bought for the back of it. So it's going to oh, be wow. a complete unit. And, and also uh, there's a local company, I'm sure you heard of Metro, Metro shelving. Yeah. 
So Metro Shelving is one of the facilities is near me. And they fell in love with my pizza, uh, some gentlemen. So they want to do a video with me, and uh -huh. they're going to retrofit the they're going to retrofit the bus for me, and they're going to use oh, it and, wow. and utilize it in some of their um some of their ads and their videos so that they can, you know, because the, the mobile, the, the, the mobile units are the, mm -hmm. are is very up and coming now, the food trucks. Yeah. So they want to utilize, I guess that and, and how they can customize something for the customer. Yeah. And, and trade, you know, that, that's a big thing in the industry. We have a lot of people trading uh, pizza for services or uh, different things, things like that, because it, um, it, it tends to work out in your favor too, because you get really it, quality work out of, uh, out of the folks. Yep, yep, especially like I bartered so much. I always joke around with people. I said, listen, I'll trade you a couple of goose eggs for some cow's milk. Yeah. You know, I always joke. And to be honest with you, look at, I got some tattoos. I have a tattoo artist who during the pandemic, his, his name is Donovan. He was a war vet. We became friends over, we beat him over my pizza. Love the pizza. And I said, how are things going? He said, Bart, it's a pandemic. He said, I'm not making any money. And he was still coming for pizza every week. I yeah. said, I always want, I, you know, I have two children, a business. I never had money for tattoos. I said, yeah. how about if we barter for some tattoos? He fell in love with it. And he said, yeah. So I ended up getting some tattoos and for barter tattoos for pizza. <laughs> Whatever it takes. So yeah. tell me about the mobile unit. How do you plan to utilize it? Is it yeah. going to be uh, parked somewhere daily and service customers daily? Or is it going to be used more of a cater weddings and events and things like that? Or do you really know yet? Um, yes, I have somewhat of a game plan. And we're going to be utilizing and all that. We're going to do a lot of events. We're going to do, you know, festivals, fairs. Mm -hmm. We're in, in locally in my area within a 10 mile radius. Uh, recently within the last eight or nine years, huge warehouses popped up with, you know, six, seven, 800,000 workers in it. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to try and get into some of those warehouses where you can go there for lunch times, you know, and, yeah. and dish out some pizzas. And, and I also do plan on doing some other things out here besides pizzas. Pot, I do some desserts out of here. So, you know, we do a lot of sandwiches out of them also. Oh, I so you. that, and I, I don't know. Those, so I might go down south. I have some friends in Florida and I have some friends in Key West that I might go down there for a few weeks out of the month and then fly back for a week and, you know, for my children. I can't leave my children. So that's the hardest part of that. So I might mm -hmm. go south. I might, I'm, I'm, I'm contemplating that a lot because I, you know, we live in, we live in an area here where, it gets cold in Northeast Pennsylvania winter. There's really not, there's really no, mm -hmm. there's going to be no business for an outdoor, for an outdoor events. Yeah, mm. absolutely. So you're thinking about literally driving the food truck South, setting up shop for a few months and coming back. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Truck it, I'm going to have, I'm going to have, have somebody truck it down there for me. I don't oh, want to drive gotcha. it. I gotcha. Yeah. Now, everybody would be stopping. Everybody would be stopping me for pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> now, how would that affect your, uh, your, your restaurant, your, your, your dining restaurant? I, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to have to figure something out with that and still, you know, still pay the bills over the winter if I decided that that's one of the factors that's keeping me here also with, without, um, that's one, how can I say this is one of the things that's, that might, that I, why I might not do it because of this is the, um, mm -hmm. the brick and mortar place, you know, yeah. but if I go, I still have to pay the bills, the bills still yeah. need to be paid. Electricity still needs to be on. So, I mean, yeah. you know, it's, 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 it's a tough decision. And, and if I had, workers to stay here and do some work, maybe sell sandwiches out or something to keep some, keep some revenue going. I would do it, but you'd have to, I, because of one man operation, you, I have to go where the money is. I keep on saying, I have to chase the money now. Yeah. You have to go, I have to go to the masses. Yeah. What sort of menu will you have out of, out of the food truck? Is it going to be pizza only or do you plan on offering other, other dishes, other food items? No, I'm going to offer other dishes. We're going to, we're going to try and get into some more pasta dishes in here. Some wood fired pasta dishes are very popular. Uh, people love, not too many um, appetizers are going to get in there, but some desserts also. So pretty much a, a pizza, pasta, and desserts. I'm going to keep it simple because, mm -hmm. you know, um, like I said, once again, the workforce, we don't know how many people I'm going to be, I'm going to have with me. So the simpler, the better. Yeah. And it, I mean, it's, it's always says that, you know, that's that acronym kiss. Keep it simple, <laughs> stupid. Right. So, yeah. And once again, I'm not the brightest guy in the world. Yeah. Well, let's switch gears real quick. I want to talk about your pizza a little bit because it's very artisan um, and, and it looks really good. You know, how, you. how did you learn to do this and, and how'd you come up with that dough formula that you're using for, cause wood fired is so delicate. <laughs> I always think about it, how it delicate is. it is to get that, that process down. I be honest with you. I am not 100% self-taught, but I am. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I had a great friend of mine, and he owns a pizza place, Cosmo Salerno. He owns a, a, a cheesesteak place also. Uh-huh. I didn't even, I did not know the first thing about wood fire pizza when I, I bought this huge, I, I have this huge, it's almost 12,000 pounds. It's a beautiful, beautiful terracotta roof made in Italy. It's beautiful. And I called him up. I said, Cosmo, I said, I bought this wood fire pizza, but I need you to help me with some dough. Because he is, mm-hmm. he's like a dough guru. He's fantastic at what he does. And we came down, he gave me a big. Oh, yeah, I drove gosh. him absolutely nuts for months and months and months, calling him with some questions. I, I just kept on, you lose me, I just kept on experimenting, kept on going, kept on experimenting. This is what I came up with. And I'm, to be honest with you, I'm self-taught. One, yeah. I'm, I'm 99% self-taught. I watched a couple YouTube videos and nothing after that. And it's, everything is my own and all original recipes. Yeah. Now, how long did it take you to come up with, uh, with that dough formula where you were ready to open your restaurant with it? Months and months. Oh. So I was telling you this before, I owned an ice cream shop for 12 years. And yeah. so this was outside, this, my first oven was outside of my place. So we would go down and we may have had a couple drinks in us. So mm-hmm. we, I would have some friends come down and we'd play around with recipes and like, so pizza, so ice cream customers would come down and they would gain some interest. What are you doing here, Bart? And this and that, and I'd say, so I would make the pizzas. I probably Gave away 350, 450 pizzas before mm-hmm. I sold my first one. Just gave them away. Practice, practice, practice. And then that's what I came up with. I'm still, and still to this day, I'm learning about the dough. Everything changes. Mm-hmm. And I always say, you could take those same simple ingredients in dough, give them to a million different pizza, a million different people, and every pizza will come out different. Every dough will come out different. You know, no, because everybody has their own little tricks of the trade that they use that they like to keep secrets. And that's what I do. I keep them all secrets. It's you know, I give away, I'll give away a lot, but I can never give away my dough recipe. Gotcha. Yeah. We definitely Let's hear just... that again, don't we, Denise? Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. Jer- Jeremy, let's, uh, we're going to, we're going to end up letting Bart go here real soon. Uh, do you have any final question for him before we, before we let him go? Yeah. I just want to know what, what your plan is for employees moving forward, because you had mentioned to me in an email that early on during the pandemic, like we just talked about earlier as well, people didn't want to work. You had issues with employees who were bringing drugs into the workforce and um, it was just not a good situation for you. If you do have the mobile truck and Kidder Street Deli both running simultaneously, what's your plan to staff both of those in a time when it's really difficult to find employees right now? That is one of the major questions. It's one of the seven wonders of the, maybe the eighth wonder of the world now it might be for everybody. Um, I haven't got to that point yet. I'm hoping just to get, one, two, three good employees and start from there because, you know, I don't know what to do. And it's very hard now to compete against a lot of the companies out there who are now offering starting people off with a $1,500 bonus, an iPhone, $20 an hour, $18 an hour, $25 an hour. And it doesn't matter what you pay anybody anymore. They still don't want to show up. It's sad. And I'm very, there's some very fortunate people in the restaurant industry who are able to attain their, who are obtain their, employees they really are so i'm that's one of my skepticisms about it i'm not exactly sure how i'm going to tackle that problem yet but yeah. like i said i know I'm if i have to make pizzas by myself yeah. i'll do it by myself because i always say you know what if i focus on one pizza i can only make one pizza at a time i do one pizza mm-hmm. and if like i said and, and so one pizza one pizza one pizza and that's where i'm at until and then if someone comes along great it's a blessing yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know, you got the dogged determination that it, that it takes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I wish you the best of luck. I can't wait to see how it turns out. I know you said that your mobile unit should be ready to go in a few weeks. So yes. please send us some photographs, uh, email, send some pictures when it's all, when it's all finished yeah. and completed. Yeah. Keep I will. Us, Thank keep you. us posted on how you're able to get uh, good employees and how you're able yeah. to uh, keep them. Uh, Cause a lot of people are wanting to know that. Uh, and uh, we'll see you down the road, literally. Listen, thank you. Listen, if you guys want to come and fill an application out, come on down. <laughs> yes. Uh, Sounds absolutely. good to me. I, I want that iPhone, $500 starting <laughs> yeah. bonus and $18 yep. an hour, and I'll be there. <laughs> exactly. I'll be there in a second. Man. Hey, free <laughs> yeah. t-shirts, too. Free t-shirts, too. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. Listen, All right. Listen, thank, thank you for your time, great. man. All You're right. welcome. Thank you. I really appreciate everything. And you guys have a great day. You too. Right. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bye. Thanks. Bye.